Okay, is it just me or has Timex been on a roll this year? We've always had the Marlin with that 1920s flair, then came those colorful Q divers with the fantastic hair pulling bracelets. We just can't ignore Timex anymore. I also can't seem to put my credit card away. But don't get me wrong, I love the moon swatch, but now you can get a titanium for $350, then this Panda chronograph for sub 200. Sign me up. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'll show you another Timex watch that just came in as I was filming. Uh, uh, uh. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. It's getting cold and frightful out there, so come warm yourself up with some watch talk on watchcrunch.com, a modern platform designed for watch nerds around the world. If you've ever looked at a photo of a Paul Newman Daytona or a vintage Hoyer Carrera and thought, one day. Well, Timex thinks that this is your lucky day to scratch that itch for a tiny fraction of the cost. The Q chronograph goes all in with 60 styling with a classic tri-compact chronograph that should have Steve McQueen in the backdrop. The line comes in both Panda and Reverse Panda colorways, and there is a bracelet option. But I have very little faith in a bracelet at this price point, so I decided to go with the strap option, and boy am I glad I did. More on the strap later, but this champagne colored dial gives off a pearly iridescence and that highly recognizable tri-register layout ought to quicken the pulse of any watch nerd within a 15 foot radius. Now we can't expect the world for $200 and we have to settle here for a quartz, but the YM12A movement offers a 5 hertz sweeping chrono hand and up to 5 years of battery life. I also noticed that the chrono hand actually stops running after a while if you leave it going, likely a power saving feature. There is a date window tucked inconspicuously at the 430 and an oversized letter Q at the 12, making this the official watch for capital stormers. The theme continues with a box plexiglass crystal offering up heaps of distortions and we get a black aluminum tachymeter bezel all tied together to a tono shaped case. There is a consistency of design choices that results in a very vintage inspired package. This case is brushed on top with polished sides and a nice bevel that runs along the length of it. It is 40 millimeters wide and has a good wrist presence at 14 and a half millimeters thick but without feeling too bulky. Much of that is thanks to its lugless design. The strap actually tucks under a hood at either end of the case. And interestingly, the strap opening is just 18 millimeters wide, which then expands to 22 once the strap clears the hood. So I was happy with my choice to go with the strap option as this pale brown leather pairs really well with the color palette of the watch. It's actually not bad in quality, feeling substantial yet supple on the wrist. And on the back, Timex even proudly tells you that it comes out of the SB Foot Tannery in Redding, Minnesota, likely the best tannery in Redding, Minnesota. The Panda Chronograph is an instant classic on the wrist, reeking of 60s vintage flair. It's a watch that pairs well with your weekend attire or can even spice up something more formal like a suit. But unfortunately, it's not all roses and butter chicken here. The biggest letdown is the moment you go to operate the chronograph function and realize that the start and stop pusher has no click. There's literally no tactile feedback from the watch that acknowledges your action. It kind of leaves you to have to double check that the chronograph is actually started. This might seem a little nitpicky, but most of us use the chrono function as a fidget toy anyway, and such a mushy response kind of ruins the whole experience. Any illusion that you're operating some fancy vintage chronograph is immediately dispelled and you're reminded that this watch is just made to look like a classic. I imagine this is an easy fix and I really hope Timex addresses it soon. Now I told you guys I had another surprise watch, but first please take a moment, like and subscribe if you haven't so we can keep bringing you these videos. 
This is a Timex and worn and wound collaboration called the WW75. It's limited to a thousand pieces, 500 in this blue colorway and another 500 in a brown dial. Now, I couldn't figure out what the 75 stands for, but my guess is that it's referring to the disco decade because this watch is another one that draws heavily on vintage cues, looking like some sort of clock off of a funky post-war kitchen appliance. This baby blue waffle dial is surrounded by a cream chapter ring, all topped off with red highlights. Raised and applied hour markers straddle the two colors, and a blue second hand is finished with a white tip. The quirkiness carries into the case, which is also like a squat tono shape, which is brushed with sharp polished bevels. The proportions are great. 37 by 12 and 43 lug to lug. A great unisex size too. But having blown the $200 budget on funky design and superb fit and finish, you think that we again have to settle for a quartz movement, but you'd be wrong. Inside this watch is a manually wound Siegel TY6 movement. Now, I wasn't expecting much, but I was pleasantly surprised that it hacks, hand winds, and must be quite thin to fit into this svelte case. Now, Timex is an American icon, founded in 1854 in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's a little bit of a shame that they have to opt for a Chinese movement, but these have been proven pretty reliable, having a good track record in the Marlin line. Other ways the costs have been kept down include a domed plexiglass crystal and a pretty stiff brown strap. I mean, I like the color, but I'm gonna be switching it out for something less plasticky, which I think will really make this watch pop. Also, can we just take a moment and give some props to the Worn and Wound guys? They seem to be nailing these collaborations one after another. For me, it started with the blue Laurier Gemini with that white Cyclops subdial. Then I had the Seiko 5 Sports with the cream waffle dial on a classic pilot watch layout. And now this WW75. All watches that, in my opinion, offer really daring colors, classic designs, all with a strong emphasis on value. And as an enthusiast, without a private yacht, I appreciate that tremendously. So yeah, in a recent video, I said that you should take your moon swatch money and buy the new 38 millimeter Orient Bambino, kind of ton in cheek. And a bunch of people in the comments said that that watch was too boring. Well, duh, it's a dress watch. Well, I give you Timex and I rest my case. The budget two to $500 category is really heating up with Timex leading the way. But what do you think are some other options on your radar in this tier? Let's continue the conversation on watchcrunch.com. I'll put a link in the pinned comments below for a more elaborated discussion. As always, stay crunchy. I'll see you in the next one.